So I'm Margaret Gam. I am head of special collections and archives at the University of Iowa Libraries. And I would like to thank you all for joining us today. I would also like to acknowledge that the University of Iowa is located on the historical homelands of over 15 tribal nations. The Omaha tribe of Nebraska and Iowa, the Ponca tribe of Nebraska, the Meskwaki and Ho-Chunk nations continue to thrive in the state of Iowa and we continue to acknowledge them. As an academic institution, it is our responsibility to acknowledge the sovereignty and the traditional territories of these tribal nations, the treaties that were used to remove these tribal nations and the histories of dispossession that have allowed for the growth of this institution since 1847. To help you start your own exploration of these histories of Iowa and its people, we encourage you to take a look at the links provided in the Zoom chat, which Liz will share, or in the YouTube video description. So on to our topic for this evening. Today's speaker is Paul Morph, estate planning and probate attorney in Cedar Rapids. Mr. Morph has held an adjunct professorship at the University of Iowa College of Law, where he taught courses on trusts, estate planning, and probate. Paul is a sixth generation Iowan whose ancestors homesteaded in Woodbury County and elsewhere. He lives in rural Lynn County where he has enjoyed reconstructing prairies, rebuilding an 1860s log cabin, restoring and maintaining his 1890s barns and farmhouse, and imagining what Iowa might have looked like in the days of Lewis and Clark and before. Welcome Mr. Morph and I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Margaret. Um, hopefully everyone has a screen where they can see this, uh, says Paul's maps on it. That's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, I do a lot of talking, but it's usually about trust. So this is new to me. I know there are people on the call who know a lot more than I do about this topic. And uh, I Zoom is hard for me, but uh, we're going to do the best we can. I, I don't know what you're used to, but I thought maybe I would start with a few minutes just explaining how I came to this. Uh, kind of interest in cartography and Iowa history. So um, the I did grow up in Iowa. I love Iowa. Uh, when I decided to move back to Iowa after law school, um, I attended in New Haven, just like uh, Arthur Bonfield, and uh, wanted to find a place where I could live in the country um, and uh, enjoy the, the kind of the full beauty of rural living. And uh, we live on Ivanhoe Road. I will talk about Ivanhoe later on some of these maps, but um, this is a picture I took last summer, just short, short, maybe half mile from my house. And I have three beautiful daughters and we love growing up in the country in Iowa, it's wonderful. Um, the, the book that got me interested in this when I was a third year at Yale, uh, thinking about coming home, I read this book, uh, Grassland, The History, Biology, Politics and Promise of the American Prairie. And kind of revisioning uh, that Iowa was not always farms and it was such a short period of time you know, from 1838 to 1860, really, that we just plowed it all and transformed it. And an interest in, in what was here before and can we maybe bring some of it back. So I highly recommend that book if anyone uh, has an interest in the natural history of Iowa. Um, so when I was here, uh, my parents were taking some farmland that they had near their house out of production. It was highly erodible. It's actually this piece in the middle center with all the sunflowers on it. Um, uh, that's actually um, mostly cup plant. And uh, they put me in charge of it. And I just said, well, let's not just put it into switchgrass. Let's try to do a diverse prairie planting. And we did. We, we got 80 different plants and we bought the individual species and we mixed it in a cement mixer and we planted prairie. And that 14 acres has become maybe 70 or 80 acres of prairie that uh, our family has and maintains. Up here at the top is my brother and I on a prairie burn we did one year. And, and the one in the top left with the double rainbow, that's my farm. So there's prairie from the road all the way back to the old farmhouse. And I love to take the camera out and photograph the flowers and the insects. Um, uh, that's my parents restored prairie uh, in July with all the uh, pale purple cone flowers and other things blooming. And, uh, one of my favorites is spiderwort. So if, if you haven't walked in an Iowa prairie, one of the places we'll see on the maps that was settled very early is Rochester in Cedar County. One of the best prairie remnants is the Rochester Cemetery. Just take uh, long socks because there's a lot of poison ivy there too. And that's me. That's the better side of me taking a picture. Um, then uh, when I got married, Jennifer and I decided to buy this farm in the country. Uh, and it's between Cedar Rapids and Iowa City. She's a 
uh, Iowa City girl, I'm a Mount Vernon boy. And we bought this old house that was about 1898. And the man who had been living there had a cistern and there's a little hand uh, pump in the corner here that pumped water from the cistern, never had plumbing. And we, everybody told us we should tear it down, but we got really interested uh, in barn restoration and old buildings. And we hired a man from Oxford named uh, Roger Gwynnup and he convinced us we could save the house. So we did a lot of the work and we uh, ripped off the old porches, took the old chimneys out and um, were able to salvage it. And there's the house uh, maybe last winter. Uh, it's a beautiful place in the country. And uh, the old summer kitchen uh, wash house uh, still stands there. And uh, we've been able to maintain most of the old barns. This is a few years ago, my girls are older, but there's the prairie with our barns behind. So a lot of the Iowa history didn't come through the maps and the books, it just came from this relationship with the land. And we ended up planning, a, uh, putting in a pond and all these birds came I'd never seen before. Um, and I started photographing birds and we've, we've photographed over 180 kinds of birds in and about our property. And I have a website, morphsylvania.com if you're curious, uh, all the birds that we've been able to see over the years. So we have some various warblers and white-eyed vireo and a, a cuckoo and you know all sorts of different things. So it's great fun. Then a friend of mine um, uh, who um, uh, lives in Mount Vernon had this old settler's cabin that was just west of Highway 1. Highway 1 is Dillon's Furrow. It's the original road from uh, Dubuque to the new capital in Iowa City, uh, just south of the Cedar River in Lynn County near the Johnson County border, near St. Peter and Paul's Church, if you've ever been out there. And it was falling apart. It was actually on the National Historic Register. He tried to give it to a couple museums and nobody took it. So he, he, he sold it to me for a dollar. And we took it apart, we numbered all the logs and we reconstructed it next to our pond. So that's the old uh, 1865 uh, cabin that was built by Norwegians, beautiful. So um, we love uh, all of that history. We kind of live on a little his living history farms kind of thing. And, and at some point I started getting interested in maps to see the history of where we lived. And I have a couple 1875 atlases uh, that show the Lynn County and the various uh, settlements and even the people who live there. But I'm gonna start this presentation in 1865, just because that's the year of the cabin. And uh, if you go much forward from 1865, the maps look a lot the same. Uh, 1865 is right after the railroad started to come into Iowa. So the most interesting thing about this map is, is the railroads really. Um, and there are some, uh, by the way, I, I do own all the maps that are shown in this presentation, except there's maybe one or two that I'll indicate I don't. But some of the digital photos are not from me. I'm not set up to take great digital uh, pictures. So I borrowed some of the images from the vendors I bought the maps from. So that's a that's my bibliography, I guess. Um, but but this was an 1865 uh, sectional map by Colton. Um, and it's a very big map. It folds up. Um, the uh, few things of interest, northwestern Iowa, the, the very northwestmost county is called Buncombe County. It, it had that name for 11 years, was then renamed for General Lyon, who was a Civil War general that I think was the first general to die. Um, there's no towns in these counties. Uh, there's an indicated military road that went, I think, from maybe St. Paul down to what would be Sioux City. I don't think that road ever was built. Um, I, it, it's certainly not there today. The only town you see in this quadrant is Spencer, a town called Peterson, and then way up here, Spirit Lake. Um, so Spirit Lake was very early settlement. We'll come back to that. Um, but the, the railroads really helped drive development in Iowa, and you can see this on the map. So the, Iowa has two judicial districts, the Northern District and the Southern District, and that relates to where the train routes went. Also, my friends at the Cedar Rapids Gazette and, and even like the television stations say a lot of the districts uh, relate to where the railroad lines uh, went. And so the first uh, major line was from Dubuque. It went to Farley and then it split and went to Cedar Falls and down to Marion. Um, uh, and so that was a region. And, and you know, the same people, uh, law firms, uh, everybody would ride those railways and it really developed together. Iowa City really is separate, perhaps in part because of the railways. Um, we had another one from Clinton uh, that went to Cedar Rapids. Eventually, Cedar Rapids and Marion would obviously connect, but Cedar Rapids really grew because of the railroad. And then uh, it goes to Nevada here, and it went on to Ames. Uh, but by this point, it was dead ending in Nevada. And then the southern line from Davenport to Iowa City, and that continues to Des Moines. So that became the southern district of Iowa, and those towns all developed very quickly. And then if you go to really old Iowa maps, this is the part of Iowa where all the action was. 
uh, Lee County, Van Buren County, Des Moines County. And there were all these lines that all converged in a Tumwa. Tumwa was a big railroad town. And then they went on to Oskaloosa. And eventually that connected to Des Moines, but it hadn't at this point. So that's 1865. Uh, this is the one map I don't have. Uh, I just liked it. It's an 1855 pocket map. I have a number of pocket maps that fold out, that they would fold up inside a little binding. And here, <laughs> they look like this. Um, looks like a little book, but when you unfold it, it's a map. And so the map is inside and it's all folded up tight. So that's one of these. And you see by, if you go back to 1855, there is no platting of townships in this Northwest corner yet. We have a lot of other counties that aren't right. We have Kasuth County is now one big county, but the top half of that is Bancroft. Um, Webster is a double sized county, however, down here. And uh, there's a Sac County, which still exists, but then there's a Fox County that now has another name. And where um, Sioux City now is, it's, it's shown as Sergeant Bluff. There's no Sioux City. And the name of that county is Wacom, W-A-H-K-U-M. So it was still taking form. And, and in, a lot of these roads never really happened, but uh, Council Bluffs was the major leaping off point for wagon trains west and so forth. So they have all these roads converging on Council Bluffs. Council Bluffs was gonna be the big, big Western city. In fact, there's maps where Council Bluffs is the only city on the map if you go back far enough in Iowa, but it's always shown on the west side of the river where Omaha is uh, in those early maps. Uh, but I don't think this road ever occurred. It was said it was a proposed state road. Uh, in fact, Sioux City developed and, and the railroads took things straight across. So um, that's a lot of it. The, the only railroad that had been actually developed in 1855 was just a little bit from Muscatine uh, and um, Davenport to Iowa City, this little triangle. So the railroads were just in their infancy. Um, all right, so we go back in time a little further, 1851. This is a Cowperthwaite uh, atlas. There are all these atlases and I have quite a few of them. Um, they were made by Mitchell and Tanner and then eventually by Cowperthwaite. They're large atlases. And a lot of these, uh, uh, Professor Bonfield would be very upset, but they, they've been broken. And you buy these maps and they're clearly from broken atlases. And in fact, he's gotten me interested in, in owning the atlases instead of just the maps. But this uh, uh, is, is in 1851. Um, and you look, look how important Iowa City is. There's all these spokes coming off it. It is the most important place in, Lin in Iowa at that point. And this road um, to Council Bluffs is still on here. That was to be the major uh, point of exit for, for travel west. Um, Buncombe County, Bancroft County, uh, Cedar Rapids is finally on this map, even though the railroad hasn't come through yet, but it's, it's, it, it exists. Um, go back to 1850. Uh, in this map from 1851, we have all the counties, uh, but you go back one year to 1850, and only about half the Iowa counties are even on the map. And we still have this neutral ground indication, which was separating the Sioux territory from the Sac and Fox ter territory. So we're going back even though we're still in the state of Iowa, this looks more like some of the territorial maps. Um, interesting thing here, there was a decision made to move the capital from Iowa City to Monroe City in Jasper County. And that was done in 1847 by the legislature. And then in 1848, they decided not to do that. So even though there's an 1850 map, a lot of these atlases had information that was a couple years old. If I go forward, here's Jasper County. Uh, it says here, site of Monroe, the new capital. Well, that never became the new capital. And then Fort Des Moines is showed in Polk County, and there's a road that goes through a little further. So that's kind of interesting. And if you see Pella, see it says Dutch settlement. It's all shaded. So the Dutch settlement is shown on here. Um, and it was in 1854 when they decided to move the capital to Fort Des Moines. So um, the... Um, Cedar Rapids on this map uh, does not yet appear, but Marion is here, uh, Franklin, and then the town of Ivanhoe, which I'll come back to, which I live on Ivanhoe Road. So I'm always excited to see Ivanhoe appear. And this original uh, military road known as Dillon's Furrow would have come down through Edinburgh, which I think is Anamosa, uh, Fairview to Ivanhoe, Mount Vernon, Lisbon, not on the map. Uh, Fairview might be Martell, it's at least very close to where Martell is, and then to Solon and down to Iowa City. Uh, Tipton is on this map uh, and Rock Creek. And for some reason, uh, Rochester's not here. So maybe Rochester's faded as importance by this period of time. Uh, go back to 1847, a year after statehood. This is the 
north and south boundaries that ended up being the boundaries of Iowa for statehood, uh, but they didn't show the western part because there was really nothing to show and they've still only uh, platted out a few of the counties on the southeast end. Um, the county that's now um, Monroe County is called Kish Kikosh County um, and Washington County has its proper name. It's Washington County is called Slaughter County in some of these early maps, but that had changed by this point in time. Um, this is from a Mitchell Atlas, which is a predecessor to the one we saw before. If I zoom in, there's Kishkikosh County. And uh, on Johnson County, the only town in Johnson County is Iowa City. Washington's on the map, and there's a road there. And Marion and Ivanhoe are the only two towns up here uh, in Lynn County. And we have Dartmouth and Edinburgh, which I think are Anamosa and Monticello. Uh, this map does not show Tipton. It shows Washington and Antwerp. Uh, and then Rochester, where the Rochester Cemetery is down by Red Cedar. Um, Bloomington and Muscatine we'll come back to, but Bloomington is the township where the city of Muscatine is now located, and they called it Bloomington for a long time. Um, so we go back one more year. This is 1847. This is 1846, which is the year of statehood. But this map shows a con the last pre-statehood configuration. And that this is what Iowa was going to look like. It was going to go a little further north and not as far west. Uh, but they didn't approve it. It came back and they, they made it. The border is, is a little lower, so we don't get the Root River. And um, it goes further west. Statehood was December 26th, 1846. Um, there's a lot of maps about 1844 that I just love. This is one of my favorites. I own this. I have not framed it. It's a really big map, 21 by 26 inches, and it has great color. I love maps that have original uh, shaded color, and this shows Iowa, uh, everything between the Mississippi and the Missouri River all the way to the Canadian border. So the Twin Cities would be part of Iowa. I just, as someone who grew up cheering against Minnesota, I always thought it would be great if we had had this uh, be the eventual configuration. It also shows the independent Republic of Texas down here on the uh, southwest. So um, here's another one. This is from um, Morrison Brees's uh, serographic atlas. This is the first atlas to use this serographic printing process in 1844, and it's Iowa and Wisconsin. And again, Iowa is all of this. Uh, what, just wonderful. Um, I do own that atlas uh, as well as this one. Um, this I own this atlas too. This is an 1842 atlas by Jeremiah Greenleaf, um, and it shows uh, Iowa and Wisconsin, um, which were separate territories by then, and just a small area of each that had been platted. It also shows this Culver's tract up here, which is colored, which I think is an interesting uh, story. Uh, Mr. Carver was a Massachusetts colonial soldier before the Revolutionary War, and he was the first English speaker who went west to Wisconsin and Minnesota. And he wrote a book that he published in uh, 1778 about his travels in the 1760s. And he claimed the Sioux had granted him this huge tract of land. And a lot of early maps show this tract on here. His, his family never actually got possession of all that, but it's, a, it's on a lot of early maps. So um, this does have, I think, Chicago down here um, in Illinois. So um, this is the same Greenleaf Atlas, but this is the, um, the entire United States. It has big Iowa, big... Uh, Wisconsin. And then it shows Indian territory, uh, and it shows all these tribes, Odos, Kickapoos, Delawares, Shawnee, Osage, Cherokee, Creek, and Choctaw. A lot of those tribes were the civilized nations of the Southeast that had been moved there, right? So this, these are not the native uh, tribes of this area. These, this is after the Trail of Tears and everything. So um, it shows the displacement. In Iowa, we still show the Iowa tribe, the Sox and Foxes, and the Sioux and, and Potawatomi's are often here too. I don't see them on this particular map. Um, this is one of my favorites. I just love the colors and the shapes in this, but this is the Tanner uh, version of the Atlas uh, from 1841. This is one I haven't been able to find and, and purchase, but this line right here is the session of 1837. So this is in 1837, the, the treaty, uh, you know, uh, which is uh, seeded everything east of that, according to the American law, uh, to the uh, Americans uh, by the Native Americans. And they had the Iowa, Potawatomi, Sox and Foxes, and Sioux territory. And they had this neutral ground, which I assume was to se separate these different uh, tribes. Um, and the only counties plotted are plotted to the east of that line. 
Um, this is shortly after uh, territory uh, was organized and separated out in 1838. Um, if you zoom in a little bit, you see Iowa City and Ivanhoe. This is a map and a lot of these early maps. The only town in Lynn County is Ivanhoe. So um, Ivanhoe is where the uh, military road, the first road in Iowa from Dubuque to the new capital in Iowa City crossed the Cedar River, which is where most of the immigrants came in, was up the river. And the Wolf family that still lives in Mount Vernon, Mr. Wolf's a lawyer there. Uh, if you remember, there was a man uh, named Matt Kroll who played football for Iowa. Kroll Pumpkin Farm is right here, uh, and, and they are wolves. And so that family has had this land since this time. They had a ferry that would take you across the river before there was a bridge. And Ivanhoe here, there's a cemetery. It's north of the river. Ivanhoe Road, where I live, is south of the river over here. But Ivanhoe was the early settlement uh, in Lynn County. So I like that. Um, Rochester's on here as well. Um, I'm probably going to skip some of this, except I just like to show up here is Fort Snelling. Fort Snelling is exactly where the uh, Minneapolis airport is. So that would all be in Iowa under this. Um, there, here's another early map. This was another one that was Morse uh, uh, and Breeze. Uh, this is one that only was in a few editions. It just shows Iowa. And there's Johnson County with only a few of the townships platted around Iowa City. Um, Old Man's Creek and a town called Gilbert's. I don't know if any of you know what Gilbert's is. And then up in Lynn County, we have Ivanhoe Marion, which was the initial county seat uh, before it was moved to Cedar Rapids and Westport. Um, so um, this is maybe my most expensive Iowa map just because it was very hard to find. Um, it's a Colton map and it folds out. It's in somewhat disrepair, but it's a very large map and it has beautiful original color, uh, but it's based on 1840 um, surveys, I think, and it was published in 1841. It shows all the counties that have been laid out and then it has the configuration of Iowa in the top right-hand corner going to the Minnesota border. So it was published in 1841 but it was based on 1840 surveys. Um, I have some information about this, but I think I'm gonna skip it in the interest of time. Uh, up north, we have the Bloody Run Reserve and we have Farmersburg and Cassville and some towns whose names have changed up here. You go a little further south, we have Dubuque in Peru uh, and we have Dubuque's Grave and then go down to Bellevue. Those are all towns that are there. Here's Cascade Falls along the military road that's Dillon's Furrow. That is the town of Cascade today, I'm pretty soon, pretty sure, and the road still goes through Cascade. There's nothing west of that. Um, further south, uh, the military road continues um, uh, through Dartmouth in Jones County, which is probably Anamosa down to Ivanhoe and then down to Iowa City. And there's some towns out here like New York that no longer exist by those names, but there's others like Comanche that still do exist. Um, uh, you get down to Iowa City, it's shown as a very big town already. And then Washington exists, but there's no road through it yet. Um, Muscatine is Bloomington. And I have a picture. This is from the Library of Congress. The view of Bloomington, so Muscatine in 1844. And this building looks remarkably like the courthouse there today. So I don't know if the courthouse dates back to 1844. I've been going to look into that, but I haven't yet. Um, and then the, the, the seven villages of Van Buren are here. Uh, Lee County, there's the half-breed tract, which I know is not a politically appropriate term today, and there's even half-breed uh, creek. Uh, Lee County always had two courthouses, one for the north and one for the south, and it has something to do with this half-breed tract, and I've not read the history, but I suspect it's an interesting and probably a troubling history. Uh, but these were the areas where the, the Des Moines River um, where settlement came first into the interior of Iowa. So except for the Mississippi River, these towns along Van Buren County along the river are the earliest towns. And then there's a Sac and Fox Indian Agency shown over here just to the west of that 1837 treaty line. And then there's some Indian villages or Native American villages shown just, just past that. So th this has both the, the treaty lines on it. It has the, hold on. The 1837 line is here, and then this other line is the 1832 line, which is the Blackhawks War Session line. They're both on here. It was only a period of five years uh, difference, and it's just a very small carve out that's different. Um, it also has these very interesting demographic numbers. So just for example, uh, Johnson County had 237 residents in 1838, but by 1840 had 1,500. So what's that, a seven-fold increase? And Lynn went from 205 to 1385, just amazing growth. 
um, the state went from 22,000 to 43,000 in those two years. And then the biggest towns were Burlington and Dubuque with just over a thousand people. And then Bloomington, which is Muscatine and Iowa City and Fort Madison were close behind. There is no town in Lynn County that is even on this list. So nobody with no town with 50 people, it looks like in Lynn County at that point. This is another map from the same period one year earlier, also a very hard to find map. This is an even larger fold out map. Um, it, it hangs in my office and it has all of the townships that had been platted. Uh, also great color, also Colton. This one is by Jesse Williams, but it's published by Colton. And um, you see Iowa City and they've already started platting the townships around Iowa City, but only those three townships, these are all be sections. Uh, 640 acres, I think, in each one of those sections, if I'm not mistaken. Because um, Johnson County is this whole area. So there's just three townships here that are uh, platted. And then Lynn County, there's nothing. There's four platted uh, townships, but no named towns. Um, and then the, the this is called the Half-Breed Sack and Fox Reservation at that time from down in the area where Keokuk is. Um, so going back a little further, even in time, we get to the Tanner's uh, 1839 Atlas. And in a lot of these, I was just barely on the map and they don't show all of it. Um, th th this is an atlas I have from 1838, a Bradford Atlas. This is a later example that has a lot more counties. The one I have actually is this one that just shows 13 counties in Iowa uh, with a very large Dubuque County and this little triangle county called Cook County. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful atlas, very large. And there are some towns in Johnson County I thought you might be interested in. Napoleon is shown as a town. I think there's a Napoleon Park in Johnson County. I don't know if that's about where that dot is. And I looked on the internet, I couldn't find any reference to this Sipinamo, which is an onomatopoeic. But if anybody knows what that is, right in the southern end of uh, Johnson County where the English River pours into the Iowa, and then Catiz over here where the uh, lower Iowa joins the Cedar, those are two towns I'm not familiar with, and then Bloomington. Um, so that's a great map. And um, there's some more, if you look at the um, presentation and you freeze this, there's some information about that map, um, which I'm going to skip in the interest of time. This is a large format fold out map from 1838 that's very similar, but it's much larger. This one's 17 by 21 and a half inches. And I don't unfold it because it's very delicate and has a lot of tears. It's in somewhat poor condition. It's in this book, which has an interesting uh, binding um, that I, is unusual. I think it was used in colonial America for a short period of time. Um, um, but um, it also shows these early few counties and the uh, neutral ground. And this is the uh, 1832 Blackhawk purchase line, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then here, some of the other maps I have came from Congress. These are all published by Congress. And there's three of these in succession. This one says the Wisconsin Territory, and it only shows that 1832 line. This one's still the public surveys of the Wisconsin Territory, but you can see it shows both the 1832 and the 1837 lines. So it's a little bit later. And then this one, and now it's calling it the Iowa Territory. And where Iowa City is, is green, and it says Iowa City. So that's the trajectory of that uh, uh, survey. And Congress was getting reports on the progress of those surveys, and they published those. So these are uh, examples of that, probably from congressional reports. This map, I don't have the whole map, but it's an 1837 map, also a congressional map on very thin, very flimsy paper. And I have three of these that were all a little different, but they were plans for the Western defenses. So I assume these were for you know, protection against Native Americans or wars against Native Americans. Um, there's a planned road from Prairie du Chien um, that would go down to a fort right where Fort Des Moines is. Um, so it's Fort Crawford to Fort Des Moines and then across to Fort Calhoun at Councilor Bluffs. So that was the plan for the military road. Um, and then they, they talk about land that was ceded by the Sioux and Saxon and Foxes in 1825 uh, up to the left. And they show where the different uh, tribal groups are located at that time. Um, there's several of those. And then if you go back to 1835, um, we have the old Iowa configuration, but it's now called the District of the Sioux, or District des Sioux. This map actually was published in 1860, but it shows the District of the Sioux and the District of the Mandans and the District of the Osages and the District of the Ozarks all here uh, in different colors uh, to the west of the states. 
And then Mexico is Texas, because this is before Mexican statehood or independence. Um, this is another, this is from a German atlas, German language atlas. And it's, this one actually is from 1835, shows the same configuration. This one is 20 by 24 inches. Um, this is a terrible map. I mean, terrible cartographically. Um, if you look at Indiana here, Indiana goes beyond um, Lake Michigan so that it, the state of Illinois does not touch Lake Michigan. And if you see, they don't really have the right bulge in the Mississippi River for Iowa. So terribly inaccurate map. Uh, it's based on much earlier maps, actually, that they just kept using the same plates. But I, I'm showing you this is in a lot of the early maps, Iowa is shown as extensive meadows or buffalo meadows. And I, I like that. The, the, the prairie enthusiast in me just likes that it was extensive prairies or meadows or Grand Prairie if it's a French map. And then on the Raccoon River, it says, by this river, the Western Sioux come down to the Illinois. And there's Fort Madison and Fort Crawford and Fort St. Louis on that river. So it was being explored. And then Council Bluffs is shown over here by the Missouri River. And there are a couple other uh, entries here. Here the tribes meet in friendship to collect stone for pipes. And between these rivers, the different bands of Sioux meet to trade with each other and the white traders every spring. So those are things that were happening in the 1830s. Uh, Council Bluffs is noted, and then also Floyd's Grave and Floyd's River are noted. Floyd, of course, was the first person on the Lewis and Clark expedition to die, and he's buried uh, right near Sioux City. This is one of my favorite maps. It's huge. It's 61 by 51 inches, and I've never figured out how to hang and display it uh, in an appropriate manner. It's really too big to frame. It was dissected into 40 panels and laid down on linen, and there's a red ribbon that goes along the outside. But a lot of the linen has broken down at some of the folds. And I'm afraid if I tried to hang it, the gravity would do damage to it. I think maybe you destroy the value by remounting it on new linen. And so it's just folded up. And it's right here, actually. It folds up and it has this uh, kind of decorative paper on both ends. So it folds into a book. But it's, you know, it, it unfolds into this very, very large map. So if anybody has any idea how I could appropriately display that, it's just, it's just a gorgeous map. And this is the... Uh, Missouri territory that includes all of Iowa today. Um, and we have Fort Calhoun and Council Bluff is about all we have. River Moyen, Lower Iowa, Turkey, Upper Iowa rivers, and Prairie du Chien is on this map. Um, another one of my favorite maps, one of the first ones I bought, maybe bought this in 2006, and this is just part of it. This is by Kitchen. Kitchen is the great uh, 19th century, no, 18th century, so 1700s, um, British cartographer. All the great British maps are by Kitchen. They sometimes have somebody else's name on it, but he's the one that actually did it. And uh, this has great wash color. I, I think it's original color. It's hard to know for sure. So here we have New Albion, you know, and the Snowy Mountains. And where Iowa is, it says Buffalo's Meadows, which I just love. That's right below the Des Moines River. And there's this village uh, that says A-J-O-U-E-S, Iowa's, Iowa's. So that's our phonetic uh, predecessor of Iowa. Um, and then it goes up and it says, thus far, the Mississippi has been ascended, not all the way up to, um, this would be by, I guess, uh, the British folks, because the French had been all the way up. Um, and then on the Missouri River, it says the head of this river is unknown. Um, so anyway, uh, that's, that's 18 or 1787. You go back four years is another map by Kitchen. This is 1783, one of the early maps that says United States of America on it. And here all of the states go to the Mississippi River. This is, of course, before the Louisiana Purchase. So it says Louisiana on the other side. And uh, where Iowa is now, we don't have much of anything. We have the Moingona River, which is the Des Moines River. There's uh, an indication of lead mines, but it's on the uh, Galena side of the river. And then Fort LeSueur is up in what's now Minnesota and the Falls of St. Anthony. So almost nothing in that map about Iowa. This is an earlier one from 1868, also by Kitchen, although it says Blair, but it's really Kitchen. And it goes further west. And if you look where Iowa is on this, uh, up from the Missouri River, it says Iowa's, A-J-O-U-E-Z. So another phonetic predecessor. And this is the Missouri, and I think these are the Great Lakes of Iowa. So Spirit Lake, Okaboji Lake. And I think this is the Little Sioux River coming up to feed them. So um, that's well before Lewis and Clark. People knew about the Great Lakes of Iowa. That's really interesting to me. This is another British map. This is 1720. This is Mall, M-O-L-L. -L. He is one of my favorites. And this is a very large map, but this hangs in our office as well. 
And in the West, it says parts unknown. This is, although it's, Brit it's British, it says a new map of the North parts of America claimed by France. And so all everything green is what France was claiming. And so they were claiming in 1720 to go all the way to the uh, Atlantic Ocean in a couple places between the British colonies. But where Iowa is today over here on the right, there's not much of anything, but I do like there's a French factory here um, and uh, wh where Chicago sits today, the, the Mi Lake Michigan is called the Illinois Lake or Michigan. But see here, it says land carriage of Chicago, C-H-E-K-A-K-O-U. And I'm pretty sure that's Chicago. So it was the land carriage of Chicago. Um, so I think that's kind of fun. Um, this map is, is the first real map I, that got me excited in Iowa history and cartography. The one I have is from 1708 and is a mortier. It's a Dutch derivative, uh, same plate, but it, it's by a Dutch uh, atlas. This one is the original 1703 by Delisle, and I'm not sure how to pronounce that. D-E-L apostrophe I-S-L-E. And this is the first map I've ever found that says Iowa on it. So that's why I like it. So this is a map of Canada and New France, but clearly Canada and New France includes this area right here that is Iowa. So you have the, Miss the Missouri River, the Des Moines River and the Mississippi River. And even in 1703, they've got a pretty good bulge where Iowa is. I mean, you could recognize that as Iowa on a map, right? Now there are some mistakes in this. Um, they have, and I'll show you. So, uh, and this is the one that hangs in my office. It has some neat old color uh, and I couldn't get a good picture because of the glare. But if you, if you uh, zoom in here, uh, it's actually the Missouri River that extends far to the west. But they thought it was the Des Moines River. So it has a cartographical error. They have the Des Moines River becoming the river long and going way, way further, which is, which is not the case. And, um, but, but along this Missouri River, they have a river coming off to the north or the, the east uh, that they call the River des Iowes, A-I-A-O-U-E-Z. And then here along those Great Lakes, they have some settlements that say Les Iowes, A-I-A-O-U-E-Z. So that's the first indication I found on a map of the word Iowa. Um, it also has Mine de Plomp over here. This is long before Julian Dubuque came north, but it shows that there are lead mines about where Dubuque is today. And the Moingona River is, is named. Um, it says Prairie down here. So that's the you know, Grand Meadows, that's the French equivalent. And I don't know if this I, A I O U R E O, U with an umlaut A, that kind of looks like Iowa too. I don't know what that word means, but it's an interesting uh, map. Um, this is the green, is, is mine. And um, I just think it's a beautiful old map. So just to show you, this is a new map from the DNR. The Missouri River comes up, and then the Little Sioux River comes off of it and feeds. Uh, the Great Lakes. So that's accurate. The Missouri, we have a small river, and then we have a bunch of lakes. That's what this shows. Missouri River, river off of it, and a bunch of lakes. So I think the French found somehow uh, Spirit Lake. You go back five years before that, there's another French map by Hennepin, and there's no detail. Everything west of the Mississippi is just blank. So it's somewhere in that five-year period that the French started exploring and um, you know, developing maps of what is now Iowa. This is about as much detail as you get. If you go back to 1666, um, another 30 years, this is the Janssen map, which is beautiful, uh, old color. Um, and if you look at the Midwest, they would put animals in cartouches to cover up what they didn't know. So we have a bear and a deer and a pig or something, or I don't know what that is. Maybe that's a, a marsupial horses, rabbits, there's nothing. There's no idea what was in the middle of the country. There's no idea even that there's a Mississippi River that comes north that's significant. There's just all these little tributary rivers from mountains. So they had no idea what the middle of the country looked like in 1666, but it's beautiful. Um, it has a California as an island, which was a long-term misunderstanding. And the only town I can find on this map is Jamestown. So Jamestown is uh, right here. Uh, if you see my cursor, that's Jamestown, T-O-W-N-E. And if you go up to Cape Cod, there is Bristow, but there's, I don't know what that, I don't see a dot for a town. And usually the early maps show Plymouth and then eventually uh, Boston. So I think this is before uh, they, have, th this map does not reflect the New England colonies. Going back a little further, um, just a few maps that I love. This is in Ortelius, 1587. 
uh, copper plate. Uh, Ortelius was the great Dutch uh, cartographer. This is new color, but it's just beautiful. And a very wide North America and no idea what's on the interior. Uh, much more detail about South America and the islands. Um, this is a 1574 Italian map by Rosselli. Uh, it's, it, however, it's exactly like a 1548 Gestaldi map. And what I love about this is it's a marriage map. It has all these rum lines for really for navigation. But it shows North America as connected to Asia as one big continent. And so this is, you know, Christopher Columbus said he found Asia. So this is still giving truth to that uh, story. This is a little, this is a Munster, uh, 1570s. Uh, one of my favorites, because I just love the shapes, the North, North America and South America, it's a woodcut. Um, it has cannibals here. Uh, it has the region of the giants uh, noted down here because Magellan, uh, his diaries say that he saw giants and the fires they kept. The Tierra del Fuego is the land of the fires. And it says Freti Magellanus, the Straits of Magellan. And this is Magellan's ship uh, right under Japan, uh, which is almost touching the west coast of the United States. And all these islands are the 7,448 islands that Marco Polo's books talked about. So there's a lot of myth in this still. Um, this is a 1553 uh, map by Peter Appian, has the cannibals, the regions of the giants. It also has this uh, ugly uh, face blowing an ill wind north from uh, the, the Antarctic region. And that represents uh, the expected cause of scurvy at that time. So Magellan's fleet had all gotten scurvy, except Magellan didn't get scurvy. A lot of his crew thought it meant he was superhuman or something, but he had taken along quince jam that he ate but didn't share with the crew. And the quince jam uh, kept him from getting scurvy, but uh, they didn't know what caused scurvy. So they attributed it to this ill wind. And this very narrow North America is derivative of the Waldstein Miller map, which is so famous and that hangs in the Library of Congress. This is a much smaller map, but I love it. Um, this is a haunter that's very similar. Uh, the difference here is it doesn't show South America and North America even connecting, and it's very little known about North America here, but it does say America. It has the word America, and it's 1546. Um, this is a 1541 map, but most of these 1541 freeze maps are based on 1522 plates. The color on this one is new color, uh, which is beautiful, but not authentic. Um, and it shows Greenland uh, coming out as part of uh, Europe. And then this is Scandinavia. It says like basically Sweden, Norway, Finland, uh, Gotland, it's all on here. And then there's just this tiny little bit of North America and a little bit more of South America to the uh, West. There's a video. I bought this one from a place called Neatline Maps, and I've linked a video where they talk about this map and a lot of the oddness of the shape of Southeast Asia and the mountains of the moon. So if you're interested, you can look at that. There's another one by Lawrence Fries, also derivative of a 1513 Waltz and Miller map. So we have Africa over here. We have South America, big coastline connecting without any real Central America. And this little peninsula is Florida. Isabella is Cuba and has a Spanish flag. Um, Hispaniola is, of course, uh, Haiti. Um, and then um, the, the Terra Nova down here, this map talks about Christopher Columbus being the one to establish it, was intended to refute Americo Vespucci's claims and give more credit to Christopher Columbus. It has the cannibals here, and it has this large marsupial that looks like a marsupial bear to me. Um, so that's a fun map. And that's what I've had and is actually uh, one I'm parting with. But I love that map as well. And then this is the third freeze map I've had, and this is a 1522 plate. And we'll probably end about here. But what I can't figure out about this map is if you look at South America, look at the western coast of South America. It looks pretty accurate, right? If you look back at these other things, they had no idea what South America looked like, even up here. They didn't know until uh, we got information from Magellan. Well, Magellan's one surviving boat returned to Europe in a 1522. This plate predates that knowledge, we think. So a lot of people have speculated the Portuguese kept things very close to the vest because maps were trade secrets. And maybe this reflects some Portuguese knowledge. Maybe uh, Magellan was not the first to go around uh, the Cape of uh, what, Good Hope and, and end up on the western side of America. Maybe a Portuguese sailor had done that before. And this map is derivative of that. So that's a beautiful old woodcut. Looks like a very old world map, but with the new world imposed on the left. So that's a whirlwind tour through my map collection and my love of Iowa history. Um, I, I will open it up to any questions.